The primary election is just around the corner. On the ballot, again in Broward and Palm Beach counties, former Mayor Dale Holness, helping voters and hoping voters will give him a chance to represent Florida's 20th district in Washington. Earlier this week, I had the chance to speak to Mr. Holness. Here's what he told me about the recent lawsuit against him. Mayor Holness, always good to see you. It's great seeing you also. Thanks for having me. So the last time we talked, you were running for the special election Correct. for Elsie Hastings' former seat, the late Elsie Hastings. And I believe you lost by just five votes. Five is votes, that correct? Yes. yes. That was eight months ago. The primary is now coming, and once again, you're taking the plunge. Why did you decide to do that? Well, I believe the work needs to continue. Uh, when you look at this seat, it's only two of 28 in the state of Florida that will have black representation. And, and there's tremendous needs throughout the whole community, but particularly in the black community. When you look at the poverty rate for black folks in, 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 in South Florida, in Miami-Dade County, it's 24 percent. In Palm Beach, it's 20 percent. In Broward County, it's 15 percent. We feared a little better because we've done more to, to change the dynamics that exist. And I've been at the forefront and the leadership of that in Broward County, where we targeted our six zip codes with the highest level of poverty and put resources there. Building a plan in conjunction with the uh, Greater Fort Lauderdale Alliance, one of our public-private partnership, to come up with a prosperity plan to help these communities that have been left behind, which unfortunately are mostly black and brown communities. So we must move the, in, the needle to change those dynamics. And, 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 and in this district, the whites that live there are also poor. Uh, when you look at Belglade, Belglade's poverty rate is more than 40% for blacks, 24% for whites. We must change the system in order to lift people up and ensure that they live, as, live into their fullest potential and create real prosperity, not a gimmick for all. We are going to talk about some of those issues, but we have to discuss what is happening, the back and forth between you and your opponent once again. You have been served in a lawsuit yes, yes, sir. for, according to the report, making false allegations against the Congresswoman. Yes. What is your response to that? So, so here's the deal. She's talking about a text in, in this lawsuit. I never saw the text, never authorized the text, never reviewed the text. My staff, my, 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 my workers decided to send something out. I was in Palm Beach that day, and they wanted to get something out for some fundraising effort. So I never saw it, never authorized it. But the real issue is what the people are asking about. Where's the thousand dollars that was promised? And the fact that there was a contract given for 20 plus million dollars that all of a sudden moves you from $86,000 a year to $6.5 million a year. This contract was intended to take care of folks who have COVID. The question is, how did that money move? Why was that contract given? And then on top of that, you have $261,000 that was given to a PAC that is associated with known Republican operatives, such as Mark Goodrich, who got $155,000 out of that PAC. He's someone who supported McDougal, who was Trump's coordinator uh, for, 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 for his campaign. So now there's deflection. Well, I believe in this instance right, with, with right. this uh, lawsuit. So, and, and here's the other thing on this lawsuit. Her name was never mentioned in the, in the text, never referenced in the text. But the text did come from your camp? It, it, it did. It came from on a, one of my your aides, one, one of my aides uh, name. I must say, I interviewed her last week. Yes. She has denied any of those and all of those allegations. And she says that she used her own funds for her campaign. So here's the deal. You went from $86,000 a year, uh, a company that in 2019 had a tax lien of $286,000 for payroll taxes, and later one for $241,000. Where did all that money come from all of a sudden? Do you think this is all going to get resolved before the primary? I don't think so. Do you still believe that the Congresswoman won her seat on a promise that she made the constituents? Absolutely. People believed so much that they were going to get this $1,000, that he, they were asking the clerks at the voting sites, I voted for Sheila, how do I get my $1,000? There's a lot of people out there still talking about, how do I get my $1,000? It, it, it was a gimmick. Because even the bill that she claims she, she's put in is only for $1,000 for one year, according to what research we have done. 
has no co-sponsor. She says it's in the Ways and Means Committee. Uh, the, well, the one that we found, uh, I think it's HR 770, it, it has no co-sponsors in the Senate, are none in the House. Okay, and when we read it, it's only for $1,000 for one year, not $1,000 a month if you make less than $75,000 a year, for, for, with no limitation. That was what was promised and sold to the people. Okay, I want to talk about the issues that are yes, facing the constituents. As you mentioned, um, some poverty in the district, uh, also close to 50% of the constituents are on a fixed income. There is a housing crisis going on, not only in South Florida, but throughout the country, but especially here in South Florida. What are some of your ideas? What would you do to try to remedy the situation if you were to be elected as congressman for this district? Well, let's look at the housing issue. I've been at the forefront of leading the effort in Broward County to push for affordable housing to be built. In Lauderhill, we built many affordable units, and also to create home ownership, because when you have home ownership, you stabilize your situation. The rent doesn't go up every month. Mortgage might rise a little bit, but it's stable. It also helped to alleviate poverty, and, and, and it, because it allows you to transfer some wealth to your future generations. What we must do is encourage local government and counties and the state to put more money in and use the federal federal government as a stimulus to do that. Such as the Sadaski Fund. If we bring federal dollars down, then you release that money. At the local level, encourage mixed-use development where you have affordable and also market rate rents and have a percentage set uh, such in, as in some other communities where you have 15% of the new units that are being built, built for affordability, so you can have affordability built in. You can also use the choice voucher program that the federal government has. Increase the number. That hasn't been done in a long time. Designate some for those who are in need right now, but also designate a por portion of it to build new units. Because if you're a developer or if you're a county or city, you get easier financing if you have people already ready to occupy those units. So let's partner with the private sector, let's partner with the cities, the counties, to get more units built now. Do you think this is the most important issue facing the constituents of District 20 now? I think the high poverty rate is as critical, but that lends to lack of home ownership and the high cost of living also. So, so what we must do is target those high poverty, high unemployment community. That's something we did in Broward County, where we target the six zip codes with the highest poverty rate, highest unemployment rate, and put resources in it. That's why we have a much lower poverty rate for blacks, because these are the communities where mostly black and brown people live, where you have high poverty, high unemployment, where we are 15% compared to 24% for Miami in terms of a poverty rate for black people. This is a district that needs someone who has the experience, who have delivered, not make promises, but have delivered, have de delivered strongly. We're gonna have to leave it there. Mayor Holness, thank you so much for joining us. The primary is August 23rd, good luck to you. Thank you so much.